chains, the many forming the one, from the atomic strings that create life to time itself. Moment to moment, action to reaction, nature turns on the making and breaking of chains. And now two researchers on opposite sides of the planet are forever linked by a discovery that gives humankind an ability nature typically reserves for itself. The power of creation accomplished molecule by molecule. I was born in a very small town, in fact, Konstantinov, and uh, then uh, moved to a larger town for, to study the chemistry. The son of a veterinarian and an aspiring chemist, Krzysztof Matyashevsky grew up surrounded by science. He completed his PhD at the Polish Academy of Sciences, and in 1977, as martial law was declared in Poland in response to Soviet dissent, he left his home country, ultimately for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he began his career at Carnegie Mellon University teaching the science of polymers, versatile materials constructed by atoms arranged in long chains. For more than 700 years, Kyoto served as the ancient imperial capital of Japan. Mitsuo Sawamoto, born to two teachers in 1951, would eventually help return Kyoto to prominence as a center for groundbreaking science. My life, childhood is not very much extraordinary. When we have a time to think about where we would go into university, which department we would have select, then the teacher also recommended me, if you are interested in chemistry, you should go polymer chemistry. Put simply, a polymer is a bunch of individual molecules called monomers bonded together in a long chain. By mixing molecules that have a natural affinity for one another, chemists can initiate ultra-fast chain reactions to make a variety of materials with different properties. These molecular combinations are key to a polymer's properties, and this is where things get interesting. For instance, take the soft polymer used in contact lenses. If you've ever worn contacts, you know you have to store them in solution or they'll dry out. This is because inside the lens, the water molecules exist separately from the polymer chains and are free to evaporate over time. But what if we could design a custom polymer with repeating sequences of water molecules that are locked in as part of the chain? We'd get contact lenses that would never dry out. But a design this intricate isn't likely to happen in a natural chain reaction, because the reactions occur at a high speed. To custom design a chain, you'd have to somehow catch the monomers and attach each link molecule by molecule like the links in a necklace. This was chemistry that could change the world, bringing into existence fundamental creations not previously found in nature. If this could be done, artificial skin could become commonplace in hospitals. Highly customized polymer chains could produce artificial muscles which might flex under electrical stimulation. Frictionless floors could allow thousands of pounds to slide freely, pushed by a force equal to the weight of a paperclip. Both scientists went against the collective wisdom of the community and began work that would take years to complete. In 1995, both independently prevailed, almost simultaneously, publishing papers that described two highly similar methods of doing what the community had thought impossible. So we have many ways to create some new molecules, new materials that maybe God hasn't made it, and also nature maybe failed to make it. The method is inexpensive and doable with existing manufacturing infrastructure. The multi-billion dollar polymer industry is now starting to adopt the process, meaning that science fiction is well on its way to becoming reality. <laughs>